Order, order. The sitting is resumed. In a letter dated the 7th of May 2007, the Secretary of State has notified me that he has made a restoration order under Section 2, 2 of the Northern Ireland St Andrews Agreement Act 2006. This lifts the suspension of the Northern Ireland Assembly and affects the restoration of devolved government in Northern Ireland today. I am mindful of the importance of today's proceedings, the level of interest in our business today and the widespread goodwill being expressed towards our restored assembly within and beyond our community. That goodwill is evidenced by the large presence in the gallery today of members of the public and guests, including some who have travelled from London, Dublin and the United States of America. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to welcome all our guests here today and thank you for your interest and support, past and present. Since we last met, the Secretary of State has amended the standing orders for the Transitional Assembly that relate to signing the role of membership. Mr Trevor Lunn has since signed the role of membership in the presence of myself and the clerk to the Assembly. I am satisfied that he has taken his seat in accordance with the amended standing orders, and I therefore have deemed Mr Lunn's designation to be other, and in accordance with the legislation all members have now taken their seats in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Members will be aware that draft standing orders were prepared by the Secretary of State and in accordance with the legislation these have today become the standing orders of the Northern Ireland Assembly. Each member has been provided with a personal copy. Order. The next item of business is the election of the Speaker. Under the legislation, members, I became Speaker of the Northern Ireland Assembly this morning. However, I do believe that it is important that the Assembly should have an early opportunity to elect a Speaker from amongst its members. I wish to remind members that the election of the Speaker will be conducted using the procedures set out in Standing Order 4 as follows. I will begin by asking for nominations. Any member may rise to propose that another member is elected as Speaker. I will then ask for the proposal to be seconded by another member as required by Standing Order 14. If this occurs, I will then verify that the member so nominated is willing to accept the nomination. There will not be an opportunity for speeches at this stage. I shall then ask for further proposals and follow the same procedure for each. When it appears that there are no further proposals, I will make it clear that the time for proposals has passed. A debate relevant to the election may then take place in which no member shall speak more than once. At the conclusion of the debate or the conclusion of the nominations, if there are no requests to speak, I shall put the question that the member first proposed shall be Speaker of this Assembly. Such a vote can only be carried on a cross-community basis. If the proposal is not carried, I shall put the question in relation to the next nominee and so on until all nominations are exhausted. Once a Speaker is elected, all other nominations will fall automatically. If that is clear, we will proceed. Do I have any proposals for the Office of Speaker of this Assembly? Dr Paisley. Uh, could I just say at this time that we appreciate all you have done in the past 
as presiding over our assemblies. And uh, I'm sure that as you look down on these benches, you had some peculiar thoughts. Perhaps some day in writing we will be privileged to read what you thought of the people that you looked upon so carefully and affectionately. And uh, I would like also to say that you had a, a difficult time, it was a difficult time for the assembly, uh, but uh, you uh, kept a grip on things, uh, you gave the leniency that you should give, and yet you kept the standards of debate right. And we are grateful to you for that. And you can look ahead and you will have no uh, doubts that you did well, for you had never to order anybody out of the House. Thank you, Dr. Paisley. Mr. Adams. Well, but while you're on my way, Mr. Horch, that's the faster. You did a wonderful job. I want to join Dr. Paisley in thanking you for being very, very fair in how you conducted the business here. And Tommy Gohan asked to go away. Go with Tosan Shaw, Kyungan Ur Nua. Akwal, I'm also very pleased that you're here to see a new start. I wish you well and your husband and family well. And by William Ra Foster, go with my Gohan Bronach, Hui. Bass, George Dawson, August Covron, a horse down Chowla, August Parchi. I also want to say that I'm very sorry to hear about the untimely death of George Dawson, George Dawson and extend to his wife and family and to his party and party leader our condolences. Would it be in order, Madam Speaker, to uh, join other um, members and on behalf of the Austrian Unionist Party to thank you? for your courtesy and the manner in which you've conducted our business over some very difficult times. I, I would wish to place that on the record. Uh, at every occasion, you extended every courtesy to us. And I know, um, as uh, other members have said, how difficult we can be at times. Um, and at all times, you, you have a, um, kept a sense of humor and a sense of occasion. And I know um, we are grateful to you for carrying on well beyond the point at which you, you could easily have re relieved yourself of the burdens of office. So I would like to identify with, with, with that. And uh, as the last speaker has also said, uh, to place on record our deep regret at the very sad news which is overshadowing our proceedings today um, uh, of the death of one of our members, uh, George Dawson, and to uh, his family uh, and his colleagues in the Democratic Unionist Party, we extend our deepest sympathies. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to join with uh, leaders of the other parties on behalf of the SDLP uh, in thanking you for your contribution in the office uh, of Speaker. You have displayed uh, courtesy, good character uh, and not a little charm during what was something of a political twilight zone uh, that we have been operating in in the past number of months. And of course, before that, you made a very uh, distinctive contribution uh, in this uh, assembly. So you will leave uh, your seat today uh, with uh, our thanks, uh, not just for your role uh, as Speaker, uh, but for your contribution here as a fellow uh, member of the assembly. And on that note, I too want to uh, extend sympathy uh, to the Dawson uh, family and to George's uh, friends and indeed to his uh, party colleagues on his untimely uh, death. Uh, George was someone who had uh, a very distinctive economic insight to provide, and this new assembly on this very important day will be the poorer for his absence. Mr. Ford. Madam Speaker, could I first of all echo the comments that were made about the passing of George Dawson, and on behalf of my party and all my colleagues express sympathy to Mrs. Dawson, to his party colleagues and to the wider family circle. As Mark Durkin has just said, he made an enormous contribution even over the summer in the preparation of a government committee to preparing the ground for the economic work to be done, and we will at least have his legacy in that respect. Could I also echo the sentiments of others in expressing thanks to Madam Speaker Bell? I may have worked rather longer with Eileen Bell than others, but on this occasion I want to thank you from my colleagues for what you did. It was a thankless task to preside over the Transitional Assembly. Uh, it wasn't just members within this chamber who gave you problems at times. You were presented with problems from a wide range of circumstances, but you dealt with them all with the good humour that we know, 
with customer and customary courtesy and charm, and you ensured that everything that could be done to defend the integrity of this assembly was done. So may I thank you on behalf of all my group and thank the staff who worked with you for what you achieved and wish you and Derek well in the years ahead. Here, here. Those that have spoken and the leaders of the various parties who have expressed personally their sympathy to the Dawson family, and I will convey this to his wife and his two daughters, and I am grateful uh, to the party leaders and all our colleagues here uh, for their kindness and their understanding of us at this time. Thank you. John Perfers. Madam Speaker, thank you. Can I just, uh, on behalf of myself and the Progressive Unions Party, express our condolences on the death of, of George Dawson. Um, very sorry, and we'd like you to extend our sympathies to his family also. Thank you. Um, Madam Speaker, it's been such a time for you over the last couple of years. Um, difficult at times, but you embraced it with your usual um, enthusiasm and courage. And can I just thank you on behalf of our own party and wish you very well in your retirement. I know that you'll indulge all the passions that you have, including fashion and golf and all those sorts of things. And I wish you very well for your retirement. Thank you. Do you have any proposals for the Office of Speaker? I'd like to propose uh, Mr. William Hay. It gives me very great pleasure to nominate Mr. Hay for, from the Foyle constituency to be the first elected Speaker of the Assembly. I was fitting to say some brief words about him. I just say I have known the Hay family far too long to want to remember how long ago I met him. He was a young boy in short pants at that time. <laughs> uh, he he uh, came to prominence uh, through his mother, Anne Margaret Hay, who was the first DUP elected representative ever in County Londonderry. This is a proud day for the, the Hay family and in memory of their mother. At the last election, William performed a remarkable feat of topping the poll in an overwhelmingly nationalist constituency. With all due respect uh, to my friend, the leader of the SDLP. It's not often that happens. He's regarded well by unionists and non unionists, and I might say that we welcome the opportunity to put him forward. I must say that I acknowledge that at the next uh, uh, election of an assembly, uh, we will be supporting a candidate uh, drawn from the other side of the House. And, uh, of course, that will rest with the people, because we will be going back to the people for new mandates. But all things considered, if we do well, um, the, then we would be supporting someone from the other side of the House in the next Parliament. Thank you for your leniency. Thank you, yes. I was lenient, but it's the day that is in it. May I have uh, a seconder for the nomination? Speaker, Mr. It gives me great pleasure to second the nomination of William Hay, Member of the Legislative Assembly from the Foyle constituency. Uh, the City of Londonderry has had many stout defenders in the past, and I have no doubt that William will continue to be one. But I do hope that he will not find himself. <laughs> That's a very backhanded compliment. I do hope that he will not find himself under siege in that chair. Yeah. Our uh, best wishes go to him, and I second the nomination. Mr. Hay, do you accept the nomination to be Speaker? Madam Speaker, I accept the nomination. Is there any further proposals? The time for proposals has expired. I just refer to my clerk to see if there are any speakers notified. No. Being no speakers, I will put the question. The question is that Mr. William Hay be Speaker of this Assembly. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary of any, no. As there are eyes from all sides of the House, 
and there are no dissenting voices, I am satisfied that cross-community support has been demonstrated. I therefore formally declare that Mr William Hay has been elected as Speaker. But before I vacate the chair, if with some indulgence, for the last time, I would like to make a few personal remarks. When I first took up the position of Speaker, I confess to members that I considered it rather a daunting task. Facing one, one's peers in such a formal and unique role brings with it many challenges, and I was anxious to ensure that I conducted myself in a manner that reflected the importance of this office. Looking back over the last year, I want to place on record my sincere thanks to members for the cooperation and goodwill that they extended to me from the outset and which has continued to this day. That goodwill has enabled us all to overcome each and every challenge. My thanks also to my two deputy speakers for the support they gave to me and to the Assembly as a whole. I also wish to put on record in the House my thanks and admiration for all the staff of the Assembly Secretariat. The position of Speaker offers an opportunity to observe in much greater detail the lengths to which our Secretariat officials will go to serve this Assembly, and their commitment and loyalty to me personally throughout my time in office has made my task a great deal easier. Members will know that my desire has always been to see a stable, devolved Assembly in Northern Ireland, working for the best interests of everyone in Northern Ireland. As I leave office, my hope is that today heralds the new beginning of such an Assembly, and it has been my privilege to play some small part in achieving that. While, as I have said, I consider the role of Speaker a daunting task, upon taking up the office, I took as my personal motto a paraphrase of that used by the Special Olympics Unit Movement. I hope to succeed, but if I don't, I will be brave in the attempt, and I hope that I have lived up to that standard. To this Assembly, to each of the members, and to my successor in particular, I offer my very best wishes as you set about the task for which you have been elected. I would now invite the Speaker to take the chair, and I would like to hand over the Assembly's gavel as a symbol of the office of Speaker of the Northern Ireland Assembly. Members, before the next item of business, may I take this opportunity to thank members for the election, electing me to the position of Speaker. As I take the chair, I am conscious of the role played by past speakers here in the Northern Ireland Assembly, and would wish to express my own regard, my own regard for the manner in which the outgoing Speaker conducted herself in what was, for all of us, an often challenging an unusual situation. I find myself in the position of being the first speaker directly elected by the Northern Ireland Assembly. This is indeed a privilege, but a privilege that carries with it considerable burden. In electing me, members have placed their trust in me and in my ability to maintain the authority and the impartiality so essential to the office of speaker. These values, authority and impartiality are the values which I will strive to uphold, seeking to act at all times as a servant of the Assembly 
as a whole. The authority and respect for the Office of Speaker is drawn from the members themselves and the cooperation which they offer to the Office. I trust that respect, cooperation will be forthcoming, as it has been in the past, and that together, as an Assembly, we will fulfil the responsibilities placed upon all of us with mutual respect. To this end, we shall now proceed. Next item, business in the order paper, is the election of deputy speakers. Standing orders require that there be three uh, deputy speakers elected. The procedure for electing deputy speakers will be the same as that adopted for the election of speaker. I will ask for nominations which must be seconded. I will then verify the nominee accepts the nomination and will continue in this way until there are no further nominations. I would remind members that a debate may take place after I announce that the time for proposals has passed. Do I have any proposals for the Office of Deputy Speaker of this Assembly? Mr. Gugarja has August Captain William Captain Francis Malloy, Marlas Con Corla, and for William Couple of Fuckle, Ara Fast of We Francis. First of all, congratulations, uh, Mr. Speaker, on your elevation to this uh, post. And I want to nominate uh, Francie Malloy for the position of Deputy Speaker. And I could just say a few words. Uh, he, like you, is also stout. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, an Armagh man who represents uh, Tyrone. And uh, it's a good pleasure for me. He has been around our struggles since the very early days of the civil rights uh, struggle. It's my great pleasure to nominate him for that uh, position. And if I could just uh, pray your indulgence, I just want to extend condolences to our member from Fermanagh South Tyrone, Jerry McHugh, who is this morning at his father's funeral and isn't here with us today. Gorham Okay. Okay, do we have a seconder? For Mr. Malloy. I second that proposal. Mr. Malloy, do you accept the nomination to be Deputy Speaker? I accept the position. Is there any further proposals? Sir Ed Jampe? Uh, Mr. Speaker, Perhaps I beg your indulgence for one moment to, uh, on behalf of my colleagues to congratulate you. Your seconder described you as a stout defender. We shall decide, dis, uh, describe you as a robust defender, yeah. we hope, of, your, of, of our interests, of the interests of the members in this assembly. Um, may I now uh, propose the uh, name of Mr David McClarty, uh, member for the East London Derry constituency, for the Office of Deputy Speaker. Um, Mr. McClarty has extensive experience on our business committee here, uh, and I believe he'd be eminently em em suitable uh, to hold this office of Deputy Speaker. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for Mr. McClarty? Mr. Speaker, uh, it's with much pleasure that I endorse the nomination of uh, Mr. McClarty, uh, and, and I now uh, uh, move that, that his name be accepted. Mr. McClarty. Do you accept the nomination to be Deputy Speaker? Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. I accept the nomination and maintain the theme of stoutness. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any further proposals? Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, may I join with uh, other leaders in congratulating you uh, as the first directly elected uh, Speaker of the Northern Ireland uh, Assembly? Uh, we have worked well as uh, constituency colleagues, but I know that will stand me no favour uh, from the chair whenever I am, uh, whenever I am uh, out uh, of line. And I know uh, that you have been a very solid uh, representative uh, of the Foyle uh, constituency and served uh, Derry City Council very well uh, as uh, chair. I want to nominate 
uh, John Dallet, another uh, assembly member from uh, East, another <laughs> assembly member from East Derry. As, 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 going to be. <laughs> shares for Weight Watchers are going to be going up here at a, fast, uh, at a, at a very fast rate after this morning's procedures. <laughs> I want to nominate John Dallet, another MLA for uh, the East Derry constituency, to serve uh, as Deputy Speaker. He is someone who has served with distinction in the last Assembly, has a solid record uh, of service uh, in uh, local government, and has given very proud service to this entire community. Do we have a for Mr. Dallet? Uh, Mr. Speaker, it gives me great pleasure uh, to second uh, John Dallet. Um, it will doubtless come as a great relief to the House that I do not propose to make any nomination of Deputy Speaker at this time. However, um, feeling svelte and enthusiastic after my exercise around the streets of Belfast yesterday, I would wish you well in your role as Speaker in robustly defending the interests of this Assembly against all comers, and we will look forward to working with you. Mr. Dallet, do you accept the nomination to be Deputy Speaker? Uh, Mr. Speaker, without any further elaboration on previous remarks, I <laughs> humbly accept it. <laughs> Is there any further proposals? <laughs> if there are no further proposals, um, I understand that I have had no member indicating to me that they want to speak uh, as well in this debate. The question is that Mr. Francie Brawley, or Mr. Malloy, sorry, sorry, very close, very close, be deputy, be deputy speaker of this assembly. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, if any, no. The eyes have it. The eyes have it. As they arise from all sides of the House, and there are no dissenting voices, I am satisfied that cross-community support has been demonstrated. The question is that Mr. David McClarty be Deputy Speaker of this Assembly. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary if any, no. The eyes have it, the eyes have it. As they arise from all sides of the House and there are no dissenting voice, I am satisfied that the cross community support has been demonstrated. I formally declare that Mr. David McClarty has been elected as Deputy Speaker of this Assembly. The question is that Mr. John Dallet be Deputy Speaker of this Assembly. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary of any, no. The eyes have it, as they arise from all sides of the House, and there are no dissenting voices. I am satisfied that cross community support has been demonstrated. I formally declare that Mr. John Dallet has been elected as a deputy speaker. Order. The next item of business is the affirmation of the terms of the Pledge of Office for First Minister designate and Deputy First Minister designate. In a letter dated the 3rd of May, the Secretary of State advised the former Speaker that he had received official confirmation from both Dr. Paisley and Mr. McGuinness that they had accepted their party's nominees to be the First Minister and Deputy First Minister, respectively. Members will be aware. Now, the legislation provides that the persons nominated shall not take up office until each of them has affirmed the terms of the pledge of office contained in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Before we proceed, members may find it helpful if the pledge of office is read into the record so that it does not have to be read in full by the First Minister designate, the Deputy First Minister designate, or by other ministers as they take up office. Clerk, please read the pledge. The pledge of office is as follows. To pledge 
to discharge in good faith all the duties of office, commitment to non-violence and exclusively peaceful and democratic means, to serve all the people of Northern Ireland equally, and to act in accordance with the general obligations on government to promote equality and prevent discrimination, to promote the interests of the whole community represented in the Northern Ireland Assembly towards the goal of a shared future, to participate fully in the Executive Committee, the North-South Ministerial Council and the British Irish Council, to observe the joint nature of the offices of First Minister and Deputy First Minister, to uphold the rule of law based as it is on the fundamental principles of fairness, impartiality and democratic accountability, including support for policing and the courts, as set out in paragraph 6 of the St Andrews Agreement, to participate with colleagues in the preparation of a programme for government, to operate within the framework of that programme when agreed within the Executive Committee and endorsed by the Assembly, to support and act in accordance with all decisions of the Executive Committee and Assembly, to comply with the Ministerial Code of Conduct. Paragraph 6 of the St Andrews Agreement says, We believe that the essential elements of support for law and order include endorsing fully the police service of Northern Ireland and the criminal justice system, actively encouraging everyone in the community to cooperate fully with the PSNI in tackling crime in all areas and actively supporting all the policing and criminal justice institutions, including the policing board. Members, the Pledge of Office has now been read into the record of proceedings. <clears throat> I will shortly ask the Right Honourable Dr Ian Paisley and Barton McGuinness to affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office. Dr Paisley. I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I now ask Martin McGuinness, as Deputy First Minister, designate to make the affirmation in the form prescribed. Mr McGuinness. Welcome, Limoj de Huffy. I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act of 1998. I now confirm that the Right Honourable Dr Ian Paisley and Mr Martin McGuinness has affirmed the terms of the Pledge of Office, having taken up office as First Minister and Deputy First Minister in accordance with the Northern Ireland St Andrews Agreement Act 2006. Members, we will now move to the next item of business appearing on the order paper. And could I say something at this stage, and I know as we get through the process, I am sure we will get the cooperation of all members, but I could also say as well to people in the public gallery, with the day that is in and with the death of a member of this assembly, uh, I don't believe it would be appropriate uh, for applause, and I think uh, that needs to be said at the outset. The next item of business is the appointment of ministers. I will conduct the process for filling these offices in accordance with the procedure set out in section 18 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. I wish to remind members of the requirements set out in the Act. I shall ask the nominating officer of each political party in order by the formula contained in Schedule 18.5 to select an available ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it, who is a member of his party and of the Assembly. I therefore call on the Right Honourable Dr Ian Paisley as nominating officer for the political party for which the formula laid down in section 18 gives the highest figure to select a ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it who is a member of his party and of the Assembly. Dr Paisley. Mr Speaker, I select finance and, the finance and personnel portfolio and nominate Mr Peter Robinson to hold it. Will Mr Peter Robinson confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of pledge of office. Yes, Mr. Speaker, uh, I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Finance and Personnel, and I affirm the terms of the pledge of office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mr. Robinson is now Minister of Finance and Personnel. 
I now call on Mr. Jerry Adams to select the ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it. Mr. Adams. Uh, Captain Katrina Ruan, Banasa Mayo, Mar Ira Educus. I want to uh, nominate Katrina Ruan as the Minister for Education. Thank you. Will Mrs. Katrina Ruan confirm that she is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Kincha, Tommy Tulchinok, Lakula Hifig, Ara and Educus, Agus Jarvium, Mold Nehifiga, Maralagdrama, Ishgedel, Kahar, Dakt, Hushkart Nehern, Milanige, Nochusahok. Yes, I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Education and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mrs. Christina Uran is now Minister of Education. I now call on the Right Honourable Dr. Ian Paisley to select a ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it. Dr. I select uh, the portfolio of enterprise trade and investment and nominate Mr. Nigel Dodds to hold it. Will Mr. Nigel Dodds confirm that he is willing to call office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Investment, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. I now call on Sir Ed Jampe to select the Ministry of Office and nominate a person to hold it. Mr. Jampe. Mr. Speaker, I select the Department of Health, Social Services and Public Safety and I nominate uh, Michael McGimsey to hold the office. Will Mr. Michael McGimsey confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I confirm that I am willing to take up the, the office of Minister for Health, Social Services and Public Safety, and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mr. Michael Gajimsey is now Minister of Health, Social Services and Public Safety. I now call on Mr. Mark Durkin to select the Ministerial Office and nominate a person to hold it. Mr. Durkin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I select the Department of Social Development, and it gives me great pleasure to nominate Margaret Ritchie as Minister. Will Ms. Margaret Ritchie confirm that she is willing to take up the office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Mr. Speaker, yes, I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Social Development, and I affirm the te the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Ms Margaret Ritchie is now Minister for Social Development. I now call on Mr Gerry Adams to select the Ministerial Office and nominate a person to hold it. Mr Adams. Uh, Captain Connor Murphy, Faras Ardwaha, Mar Ayra Fobert Regiunta. I want to uh, nominate Conor Murphy as the Minister for Regional Development. Thank you. Will Mr Conor Murphy confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Mr Murphy. Uh, yes, Can Corla. I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Regional Development and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mr. Conor Murphy is now Minister for Regional Development. I now call on the Right Honourable Dr. Ian Paisley to select a ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it. Dr. Paisley. I select the Environment Portfolio and nominate Mrs. Arlene Foster to hold it. Yeah. Will Mrs. Arlene Foster confirm that she is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Mrs. Foster. Yes, Mr. Speaker, I am willing to take up the office of Minister for the Environment and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mrs. Eileen Foster is now Minister of the Environment. I now call on Mr. Gerry Adams to select the Ministerial Office 
and nominate a person to hold it. Mr. Adams. Gorm Elgut, I can call you. Uh, Capham, uh, Michelle Gildernew, Vanas Chiron, August Neil Sayer uh, Inner, Mara Ira Tailwayacht, August Bo Birch to her. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to nominate uh, a Tyrone woman who is not on her own, Michelle Gildernew, as the Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development. Will Mrs. Michelle Gildernew confirm that she is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Yes, I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mrs. Michelle Gillenure is now Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. I now call on the Right Honourable Dr Ian Paisley to select a ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it. Dr Paisley. I select the Culture, Arts and Leisure portfolio and nominate Mr Edwin Putz to hold it. Will Mr Edwin Putz confirm that he is willing to take up office and affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Yes, Mr Speaker, I am willing to take up the office of Minister for Culture, Arts and Leisure and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mr Edmund Putz is now Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. I now call on Sir Reg Empey to select a ministerial office and nominate a person to hold it. Um, Mr Speaker, I select the Department of Employment and Learning and I nominate Reg Empey for that post. I am prepared to accept the office and I affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 to the Northern Land Act 1998. Will you now confirm that you are willing to take up office? Sorry, apologise. I'm going to ask you to do it again, Sir Reg. Sir Reg Empey is now Minister of Employment and Learning. Thank you. That concludes the process for the appointment of ministers to each of the departments. I have received correspondence from the First Minister and Deputy First Minister in relation to the appointment of junior ministers. And I will read the letter. Present to the, present to the procedure for the appointment of junior ministers specified in paragraph 3.1 of the former First Ministers and Deputy First Ministers determination on the 8th of, May, 8th of December 1999, as approved by the Assembly on the 14th of December 1999. The First Minister and Deputy First Minister have appointed. Mr. Ian Paisley, Jr., MLA, Mr. Jelly Kelly, MLA, to the post of Junior Minister. A copy of the letters of appointment are attached. Will Mr. Ian Paisley, Jr., affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and congratulations to you in your post. And I willingly affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office as set out in Schedule 4 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. Mr Paisley is now a junior minister. Will Mr Jelly Kelly affirm the terms of the Pledge of Office? Well, thank you. Thank you, Tommy.